Okay, hi everyone, uh, Daryl here. Uh, okay, I'm starting this new series on my YouTube channel. It's called Ask Me Anything. Uh, generally, what happens is that uh, some people have been either as, uh, messaging me, uh, WhatsApping me, or sending me emails about some questions. And what I'm going to do is that rather than just answer their question, uh, I'm going to answer the question in a form of a video and place it on my YouTube channel so that uh, whenever I answer a question, uh, everyone can also uh, try to learn a bit from what I've done, uh, you know, the research that I've done to answer the question. Okay, um, but in the course of the last uh, maybe two to three weeks, I've had about four to five people who are asking me this same question uh, in varying uh, formats, but in essence, right, it's just this question. So the question is that, is that, is there a higher chance of making money if I buy a property during a new launch as compared to buying a property in the resale market? Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, try to answer this question, but I'm going to try to use the tools that are available to the general public. That means that if you have a connection to the World Wide Web and you have a desktop, uh, or a laptop, you can actually access all this information. Okay, so uh, of course, uh, property research right, is something that uh, all of us can do. And if let's say you are a seasoned property investor, right, then uh, most probably you know the answer to this. And uh, you need to understand that I'm making this video to try to simplify, uh, you know, a property investment to the general public so i'm trying to uh, share my little knowledge okay with everyone my humble knowledge with everyone uh, because i believe that mo to most people buying a property is going to be the largest investment that they're going to do in their lifetime so uh, i'm just showing them the lay people out there how to do it okay how what are the tools that are available to you and uh, I'm going to use that to try to prove my point about and make a make a effort to try to answer this question. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's get on with the question. Okay. So uh, in short, right, the answer is that it is not guaranteed that buying a property during a new launch will guarantee that you will make money. Okay. So we have to look at the property market as a whole. Uh, look at the price index to make a better judgment. Uh, the Singapore government and namely uh, the Urban Redevelopment Authority of Singapore, uh, which is URA in short, okay, what they do is that they actually provide uh, property investors or property buyers uh, property data for us to access. All this data is actually free. Okay? Uh, and what we're going to do is that we actually have to look at the peak period. Okay, So when was the last property peak? The last property peak was actually quarter 3, 2013, and the price index was actually 154.6. Okay, what does price index mean? Okay, uh, this, there is actually a base year. So the, the base period, okay, the base period is actually quarter 1, 2009. So quarter 1, two, quarter 1, 2009, uh, that base period is 100. Okay, so what it means is that uh, Q3, 2013, the index being 154.6 means that Properties, property prices in Q3 2013 are 54.6% higher than Q1 2009. Okay, so and where are we currently? That was the last peak. Okay, so if you remember, right, uh, in 2013, what happened? The Singapore government actually stepped in, said that, uh, okay, I'm going to implement this. Uh, now is the second last round. That time was the final round of cooling measures. And then they implemented the total debt servicing ratio. And then it tapered the property market down. And what happened after that? We, we entered a period whereby there were 15, uh, I think it's 15 quarters of consecutive uh, decrease in the property price index. So where are we? We are currently Q2, 2018. Now it's Q3 already, uh, but the statistics are not out. So Q2, 2018, the property price index is 149. Okay, uh, and what happened? The government actually came in and said, hey, uh, the increase is rather steep so later you can see uh, the gradient right of increase is actually quite steep uh, the pace of increase is quite alarming and what they say is that hey it's just 3.7 percent away from the last peak and the best thing is that right 
all the cooling measures that were implemented in Q3 2013 to taper the property market uh, for sustainable growth, they are still there. But yet, suddenly, exuberance is there. Uh, everyone is coming in to buy again. Okay, so they came in and they implemented the, the, the last round of cooling measures. Uh, you know, they just implemented a round of cooling measures and uh, they increased the stamp duties uh, across the board. Okay, and they lowered the loan to value ratio across the board as well. Okay, so uh, if you take a look, okay, let's take a look at this uh, property price index. Huh? So, yeah, okay. So this is actually available on uh, data.gov.sg. Okay, and uh, it actually shows you the, the property price index, uh, you know, by quarter. And this is the, actually the residential private residential property price index. So where was the last peak? The last peak was actually here. And this was a Q3 2013. So you can see here every quarter, right, the growth is, it was steady, 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 growing, 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 and then it hit the peak. Okay, then what happened was that it went down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so 15 ready then. After that, suddenly 16, it went up, 17, 18, 19. So 19 quarters, right, went down and up. So you can see the, the, the rate of decrease, right, was quite gradual. But then suddenly, right, here, right, the rate of increase was quite steep. So the Singapore government is quite concerned. And the reports that came out uh, in the papers and everything were, were quite alarming because they were, they were saying that oh, by end of uh, end of the year, the will hit a new peak and all these sort of things. So these are things that the Singapore government actually doesn't want to hear. Okay, so what we what we have is here. Okay, this is where we are uh, for the uh, private property, private residential property price index, and it's actually quite uh, quite high. It's close to the to the last peak. Okay, so it being like um, it being like uh, that close, right? 3.7% away from the last peak, right? But if we dwell uh, deeper into the various segments, okay, because this 149 is actually collectively, that means that it is core central region, rest of central region and outside central region, right? All, all put together, then you get 149. But if you break it up into uh, varying segments, like these three segments, right? You dwell deeper and you see so the core central region, right, which is, you know, your, all your Orchard Road like that, okay, so your District 9, 10, 11, uh, the core central region is, the last peak was 141.2. And where is the current so-called peak? Our current level is 136. So the core central region is actually not yet at its peak. The rest of central region, right, is, uh, the last peak was 155.6. And... It's not yet at the peak, also 148.5. So there's still quite a distance away. But if you look carefully at this portion, uh, which is here, which is 169.7 and 170.9. So actually, right, the the outside central region, uh, which is the mass market uh, condominiums, they are actually hovering at levels which is very, very, very close to the... Uh, third quarter 2013 level, uh, which is the, the last peak you see here. Okay, so this gap is actually the closest. Okay, and these two gaps, they are still some way to go. Okay, but if you see here outside central region, it's actually quite close. So what we're going to do, right, is that we're going to see, we're going to analyze, right, a few condominiums and we're going to take a look uh, at whether if you buy a property during a new launch, uh, do you actually make money in the resale market? And what we're going to do is that uh, we're going to take a look at the projects which were launched uh, during the last peak. That means close to this period. They were launched 2012, 2013 period. Okay, so uh, 2012, 2013 was the last peak, right? And these are just a few condominiums which were launched around that period. Okay, I I try my best to uh, make it seem like uh, okay. So 
Okay, in the last uh, last video, right, I actually showed you guys how to use this edge property. I have an explainer video how to do this. So um, you guys should know. Uh, if you don't know, right, then you just go and watch my video. Okay, so the first condominium that we're going to take a look, right, is Coven Regency. So it's a 99-year condo uh, from 2012 and it's 393 units. It's actually walking distance to Coven MRT. And uh, we're just going to take a look at... Coven Regency. So let's go to Coven Regency. Okay. This uh edge property edgeprop.sg website right is actually available to everyone. So you guys can take a look at it as well. So you look at the sales transactions. Okay, so these are the profitable transactions and these are the unprofitable ones. So these are you look at here all 29 October, 25th October 2012. These are all bought during the launch. So those who buy during the launch, uh, total of 25 profitable transactions. But those here, they bought during the launch as well. There are seven transactions which lost money. Okay. So next, right, uh, Kingsford Hillview Peak. Okay, so let's go to Kingsford Hillview Peak. Okay, so Kingsford Hillview Peak, right? Uh, we can take a look. This is the period where they actually bought during the launch, 2013. So there is a uh, nine profitable profitable transactions, and one of them which was unprofitable, and this guy bought January 2016. So for Kingsford Hillview Peak, right? So far, right? Those people who bought during the launch, uh, total of nine transactions, right? This one not during the launch. Uh. So this during the launch, right, eight transactions are profitable. Okay. So I'm giving you like a good mix. Then region residences, which is a freehold uh, condominium. Which is actually close to Boon King MRT. Not so close, uh, but I guess uh, walking distance. Uh, maybe five to 10 minutes walk. Okay, so uh, freehold condo. Okay, so a uh, total of uh, these are bought during the launch in 2011. Okay, so 2011, right, bought during the launch, uh, there, are, there are 22 profitable transactions and there are still four people who lost money. Okay, and then next we have uh, Archipelago. So we have Archipelago. Okay, so Archipelago is at Bedok Reservoir. Uh, and if you take a look, right, there are 54 transactions. Uh, this 2011-2012 uh, that make money. And then yet there are about uh, 10 transactions that lost money. Okay, so for every one transaction, eh, five transactions that uh, make money, right, about one will lose money. Okay. Uh, and then there's another one. The last one is Studio 8. Okay, so Studio 8, right? Studio 8 is quite unique because this is actually a freehold condominium uh, walking distance to Kalang MRT, like barely two minutes walk. It's actually the closest condo to Kalang MRT. But uh, if you take a look at this, right? So uh, Studio 8, right? Uh, every single person who bought, right, actually lost money. So there's nobody who made money even though they bought during the launch. Okay, so there's varying degrees. Like, I actually can show you condominiums whereby, uh, just about everyone uh, made money, but of course the volume of transactions is very low. Then, uh, there are some there are cases whereby, uh, every five that make money, one will lose money. Then after that, right, uh, there are also cases whereby, uh, well, freehold condominium two minutes from, uh, Kalang MRT station, right? Then every single person who sold also lost money. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is it. It just says that actually, right? You there's no guarantee that you buy during the launch, then you one hundred percent will make money. Uh, that is actually a sweeping statement. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, if you take a look, right? Uh, you have to delve deeper into understanding 
whether the condominium, uh, you know, uh, the facilities, the amenities around it, uh, the quality of the development, uh, who are the tenants that are going to move in, uh, the catchment area, uh, whether there is growth in that area, and then you have to dwell deeper in and then you can understand and make a better decision. Because if I pull out these transactions, which, uh, you know, people bought during the launch, the, the, the fact of the matter is that not everyone makes money. There are people who lose money. It's just that I've always maintained this fact. Every person who makes money, right, normally they talk a little bit more than the people who lose money. The people who lose money tend to be a bit quieter. Uh, everybody actually, want, people who see my stock portfolio, they always focus on the, the, the counters which uh, I made multiple folds. They never, they, they always seem to omit the fact that you know, I've even bought uh, certain counters which uh, gone bankrupt and I've lost uh, like a bulk of my investment in certain things before. Also, they always focus on yeah me purchasing certain counters which uh, like jump a few folds and then they say, wow, you're making a few hundred percent uh, return on your stock portfolio. And I say, yes, that's because you're looking at the, the, the counters that I'm making money. So you forgot that actually uh, Daryl also lose money on a few counters. So the, the fact of the matter is that uh, property is unlike uh, a stock portfolio. You cannot say that uh, not many people, uh, I'm not saying that uh, there are no rich people around, but not many people can say that, oh, I can buy like uh, one property in uh, each district and then diversify my risk for property. You can't do that. So for real estate, right, the level of analysis, right, has to be a lot higher than... Uh, investing in stocks i'm not saying that uh the risk in investing in uh, in the stock market right is low it's just that what i'm saying is that the the amount of investment that's going into a property is so much higher so i do understand why uh, some people actually do not do their own homework before they jump into a property investment uh, they they do assume that every property investment right if you get into the market and you have holding power right you will definitely make money okay but uh there are many instances whereby that is not true, but uh, that's for another video. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to show you is that at the same time, right, there are units in the resale market. So I'm just going to pull out these two examples that actually uh, do make money. And there are instances whereby people buy the resale, buy in the resale market and then they make money as well. So just now we actually had Coburn, uh, Coburn Regency. So I'm going to pull out this uh, Coburn Melody. Okay, so Coburn Melody. Okay, so if you see Coburn Melody, right, uh, you can take a look at uh, Coburn Melody actually uh, completed in 2006. And yet there are people who purchase in like uh, 2011 and they sold it in 2018, so they make like annualized gain of 1.8%. And then uh, these people, they bought during the launch. So you can see here, they bought during the launch, uh, 2005. Uh, so they made like annualized gains of 5.7. Even right, this person most probably bought after TOP, and now that uh, he made annualized gains of 5%. Okay, so like this person, right, he bought in 2010. This person bought in 2009. After TOP, right, still make money. Okay, and these are people who lost money. Okay, so total of 10 transactions that lost money. So the uh, 126 transactions, right, in Coburn Resident, if Coburn Melody made money, then there are 10 transactions that lose money. So this includes new launch, uh, people who bought during the new launch, as well as the resale market. So if you take a look here, right, uh, yes, these 10 transactions, right, most of them come from the resale market, but it's not indicative of the whole market as well, uh, as in it's not indicative, uh, it's not conclusive to say that if you buy during the resale market, right, in the resale market, you definitely will lose money because we can see that people who bought during in the resale market at a later date, like 2011, uh, 2010, uh, they also made money, okay? This is actually before the peak of 2011. So this person also bought 2008, they also made money, okay? Uh, so and around the financial crisis, uh, so yeah, so uh, it's quite a good call actually. Yeah, at that point in time, everyone was running for the hills. 
So uh, you can actually see like during this period, you know, if you buy 2009, he had an annualized gain of 5.5%. So he held for nine years. So, uh, you know, 5.5% uh, right, times nine years, right? Okay, it's a bit late. So I 5.5% times nine years, right? Uh, it goes out to, to be about 49.5%. So imagine this person bought in 2009, right? Uh, he made actually 49%. 0.5% gain, about 49% gain on his transaction on his uh, property investment. He bought it at $649 per square foot and he sold it at $1067 per square foot. So the, the, the fact of the matter is that actually there's still value in the resale market uh, and you can also make money in the resale market. Okay, but of course it's uh it's easier to to find a, a profitable transaction in the primary market because every single unit in the development has to be transacted on the primary market. So uh, the moment one person sell and make money, then you realize hey, well, quite a lot of people make money in the primary market. That's because the first owners are all primary market. But uh, the resale market, right, the level, the number of transactions uh, is a lot less. Like, you know, if let's say Coven uh, Melody during launch, all the units are available. So immediately right you have like like what uh 778 units which go onto the market and then uh out of 778 right uh, out of these 778 units if let's say a lot of people start to sell right you then of course you see quite a lot of people who make money but then after that, after the 778 units are uh, sold to these primary owners some of them they don't sell they stay inside so the the number of units that go onto the resale market right uh is not 778 is maybe like one two hundred units only, so it will seem that yeah, not many people make money on the resale market or very few transactions. That is because the that is because primary market seven seven eight units go on the primary market, but after seven seven eight units go on the primary market, then how many units go into the resale market? Confirm less than seven seven eight, right? Okay, so uh, it's just probability, right? So probability is that you most probably can find a profitable transaction in the uh from a buyer who buys a new launch because there are more sellers, there are more, there are more, how you say, yeah, there are more people, there are 778 people who bought in the primary market for Coven Melody. Okay. Uh, okay, wait, let me go back to the slide. And then there's another condominium called Bone View. Okay, so let's go to Bone View. So this Boonview, right, uh, same thing. So let's see sales transaction. Okay, Boonview is actually a freehold condominium. It's actually just opposite the road from uh, Jetscape. Um, the, the, price per, the, the price per square meter, right, historical high is uh, 1363 per square foot. Uh, this was actually for 646 square feet unit. So the uh, Jetscape is selling, of course, higher PSF than this, and it's 99 years. But um, I have reason to still uh, sort of endorse Jetscape as a as a decent buy or quite a good buy. Uh, I actually did a review on Jetscape. It's one of the new project launches which I think are decent. I, I don't endorse everything. Okay, if you read my reviews, uh, I'm I'm a fan of like uh, Park Colonial and Jetscape, and the main reason why I uh, sort of recommend them if you really really have to buy a new project launch then uh, you can consider Jetscape and the reasons why I say this right is actually in the review that I did okay so uh, let's look at bone view which is just opposite Jetscape uh, you can see right that the the profitable transactions for bone view because uh, bone view was actually uh, completed in 2003 so if you can see here right uh, all these transactions, right? Uh, there are thirty-seven transactions. Okay, and uh, well, amazingly, actually, no one lost money according to H Prop dot SG. But uh, if you see here, right, these people, not every not every of them bought during the launch. Okay, there are people who bought in two thousand eleven and they sold in two thousand sixteen and they made money. Okay, and there are also people who bought. You see, two thousand six. Okay, two thousand six, right? He bought. 
uh, this property and he sold it in 2013. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 7 years. So in 7 years, right, his annualized percentage gain right, is 11.3%. Okay, so 7 times 11.3% right, is 79.1%. So imagine uh, this transaction, right, he bought at a reasonable price and he sold it off right with a 79.1% gain. Okay, if you delve deeper into transactions like this, this is a 12.5 annualized gain and uh, 7 years or so. So if you take uh, 7 years multiplied by 12.5%, uh, it's 87.5% gain. So you imagine this person had an 87.5% gain uh, on his transaction for Boonview and if I'm not wrong, it was actually bought in the resale market. Okay, so the resale market also has quite good value. Okay, uh, a lot of people will actually say, oh yeah, uh, you know, property prices were a lot lower there. So uh, that's why you can make money in the resale market. But yes, then I'll tell you the same thing. Okay, so the new launch prices were a lot lower then also. So that's why then can make money in the new launch market. So it is the argument that you use against the resale market, right? At that point in time, right, it can use the same argument can be used against the primary market in today's context. Uh, so what I'm just trying to tell you is that there are a lot of value out there in the resale market, irregardless of whether the property price is high or low. You just have to look deeper and find. There is always value in the property market. If not, our property market will never, uh, will never move. Okay, so. Uh, people are discerning, they know that there's value in the property market. The Singapore property market still can make money. It's just that when your property price index is quite close to the peak, you just have to look a little bit harder. What I'm trying to tell you guys is that if you want to buy the primary market, there are still good uh, launches that are coming up. Um, I'm not going to endorse any of them in this video. Uh, I try my best to be as uh, neutral as possible. Uh, when I do my property reviews in my blog so you can read all my property reviews the main reason I'm doing them is because I hope that I can present a sort of like an unbiased view uh, to them even though I'm a real estate agent and some of them my agency is actually marketing it uh, I'm actually providing this review to everyone for free okay I'm not saying I never say that you have to buy through me then I provide you this review. I, set, I put it out there, anyone can read. Any property agent also can read my review and share my points with their client. And if you want to share the good points in my review to your client, please go ahead and do so. Okay, Because as property agents, we are all supposed to help one another out. But in uh, But as you know, the property industry was supposed to be professional we're supposed to be uh, you know taking care of our clients assets that is the main reason why I'm doing my property reviews okay so if I do my property review it's free information in the world wide web anybody can read them some people read my property review and they go and buy with their friend or their agent uh, after reading my property review that is fine with me okay there are people who read my property re review and come and look for me that is how I get my client base. So to some property agents, they actually uh, ask me, can I use your property review and show it uh, to my clients? Then please go ahead and do so. Okay. But of course, don't plagiarize. Don't go and say, oh, this is written by me. Don't need to say that Daryl wrote it, but you can just uh, give it to your, uh, like take certain points and show it to your client. Don't need to say it's from me. Okay. And uh, the main reason why I'm doing this uh, question and answer portion is that uh, I have people who ask me questions I'm just trying to answer them and so that everyone can benefit together okay so uh, in conclusion right um, actually the short answer to is there a higher chance of making money if I buy a property during a new launch as compared to buying a property in the resale market uh, the short answer we know okay the you actually have a higher chance of making money if the basis of why you purchase the property is correct. Okay, always remember that uh, the property is a home first. And if you think like a property owner, uh, 
you are looking for a property that is convenient, close to the MRT station, uh, you know, the facilities are adequate, uh, it's close to good schools, um, you know, there are, you know, um, convenient stores around, uh, clinics around, um, it's accessible to the city centre, then these are reasons why you buy the property and these are also reasons why your property will sell in the future. So think of property as uh, as a home first and then after that, right, try to ascertain whether the price that you are paying at that point in time is fair value or not. There are tools out there to help you in your property purchase decision. And uh, in my course of work and in building this YouTube channel, right, uh, I'll actually have explainer videos to uh, show you guys uh, the various uh, free tools that are available to the general public so that uh, you guys can do your own research. Okay, so if let's say there's any question which uh, you want to know, you can actually uh, drop me an email, uh, WhatsApp me or message me. Actually, uh, email and WhatsApp will be most appreciated because uh, nowadays very few people use SMS so I'm actually quite surprised that someone actually SMS me. Okay, uh, so that's all for this question and answer session. Uh, that's all from me, Daryl. Um, do hit the subscribe button so that whenever I and you hit the bell, so whenever the notification bell, so whenever I post up a video, right, uh, you get notified uh, and you can uh, watch the latest video that I put up. Okay, so thanks everyone. Uh, good night.